Hey everyone, this tutorial is the first of many tutorials in the uh, compiler design series and uh, we'll start off with converting a regular expression to a DFA. Now you're given a regular expression like so. Uh, the, first, the first rule, like you know how to convert a regular expression to a DFA of course, but this is a different sort of format, this is called a syntax tree format. So what you would do is you would extend your regular expressions with an augmented augmented regular expression that is you augment it or extend it by adding a hashtag symbol in the end of your regular expression suppose your regular expression is r and then you could draw a syntax tree after extending it so you draw the syntax tree of this regular, resulting regular augmented regular expression over here now a syntax tree does not have any specific rule but you always sort of the convention is always to divide it from the middle like this is the expression so you would divide it in the middle like so so uh, from star you would divide it from so star will be here and then after that draw the left side of left whatever is on the left of the star and whatever is on the right on the star accordingly so one what's on the left on the star a or b so they are or nodes they are uh, connected with the or node and then on the right of the star are all ca concatenation a b b these are all concatenated so all of these are catch nodes right and then in the end you have a hash node hashtag node so there are some there are three new uh, terminologies that you will learn here uh, these are called uh, first pause last pause and follow pause and there is this nullable what nullable basically signifies is which of the nodes is nullable which of the nodes can be cancelled out like we know that in a regular expression a star or a clean closure node is always nullable that means it can happen or it can it cannot it doesn't need to happen that means there could be zero or or more than one occurrences of that symbol which is enclosed in a star in a star node right so that means here c1 or c2 means c1 could be nullable or c2 could be nullable and the first pause of this of, of the of a or node will be the union of c1 and c2's first pause and the last pause will be also the union of c1 and c2's last pause again for the uh, for the catch node if you have a nullable if c1 is nullable then uh, then then the what you call the first pause would be the union of c1 and c2 but if c1 is not nullable if both of these are not nullable then c1 will be the first pause again last pause uh, when c when c2 is nullable last is always looking at the last one so the second one so when c2 is nullable then you take the union of the last pause of c1 and c2 and if c2 is not nullable that is both of them are not nullable Actually, no, you would just look at the C2 because for last pause, you will always look at the last last node. So if C2 is not nullable, then you would just take the last pause of C2. It doesn't matter if C1 is nullable in that case or not. But for first pause, C1 is what we're looking at. And for the, uh, for the last pause, we're looking at C2. For the star node, whatever is of the first pause of C1 will be the first pause of the last node. Whatever is the last pause of C1 will be the last pause of uh, star node. So. Let's do an example, then it will be much uh, clearer, I hope. Right, so this is a regular expression given to us. We will first, the first step that you will have to do is assign a number to each of these symbols. So A has a number 1, B has number 2, A has number 3, B has number 4, B has number 4, and hash has number 6. Uh, sorry, B has number 5 and hash has number 6. So all of these symbols will have a number, just the symbols and the hash hash node in the end but or and star they won't have any numbers just the symbols i mean just the characters and the last symbol which is the hash node and hash node is always necessary for determining the accepting state so never forget that whenever you are converting a regular expression to a dfa always add the hash node in the end right so let's try let's find the first pause of one so first pause we know the number for one uh, a uh, for a is one so i've numbered it here as well so the first pause of A will be 1, first pause of B will be 1 as well. Now let's find the last pause. Last pause will also be 1, since there is just one node, always the, uh, the number that's assigned to them will be the first pause and the last pause respectively. Okay, so now let's find the uh, first pause for OR node. As we have seen in the rule before, for the OR node, first pause will be union of C1 and C2. So C1, C2. Here C1 and C2 is here C1 is A and C2 is B. So the union of this will be the, uh, these two will be, so one, uh, sorry, the red color signifies the first pause and the green color signifies the last pause. So, okay, so one, two, union gives us this. So this is the first pause and the last pause is one, two as well. 
and as we have seen before in the terminology that the star node is always uh, whatever is on the child of star will always be followed as the first pulse and last pulse of star so one two with last pulse and first pulse will be one two as well now the main thing comes so when you're in the cat node now our, all our rules, rules will come into handy more often so here as you can see this is star node here the first child and a is just a normal child so first uh, when we're trying to when we're concerned with the first pulse we always see the left node of it right so the left node is nullable because star ha means that you could have zero or more occurrences of a or b right so that's why this, this since this is nullable will have a union of these okay but first thing first before before going on to the nodes uh, I forgot to mention that first you would have to just find the first pause and last pause of each of the symbols here. Okay, so let's just find the first pause and last pause. We just know it will be the same number. So first, first pause, five, and six. And the last pause will be the same as well. Right, so now let's find the first pause of this. So like I said, this is nullable. So we would have to take the union of the first pause. Look at the red ones. When I'm saying first pause, always look at the red ones. So we have to find the union of the first pause of the left left child and the first pause of the right child. So uh, we're finding finding the first pause. So one, two, three. Union of the first pause of the left child, uh, sec, uh, the first pause of the right child. Right. So now we find the last pause. Well, since uh, we're, we're in the last pause, we're only concerned about C2, that means the second child. So we'll just write the last pause as it is, because uh, since it's not nullable, the last pause will be as, as the last pause of whatever it has. So three is the last pause. Right, now let's look at this node. So at this node, as you can see, first pause, uh, none of these are nullable. So the first pause will be the first pause of this child. So first pause of this child is one, two, three. So one, two, three. And last pause will be the last pause of this child because none of them are nullable. So the last pause will be four. Again, first pause will be um, first pause will be one, two, three. Uh, so let's find the last pause. So last pause is five, and the first pause is again one, two, three. None of them are nullable. So it will just remain eight, this child's first pause, that's it. So none of these are nullable again, so the first pause will be one, two, three, and the last pause will be six. So let's check our answer. Right, this is our answer and it matched. Yep, it did match. Right, so we found the first pause and the last pause. Now, another terminology that comes is follow pause. Now follow pause is a bit more complicated to grasp. Uh, I faced complications in it but let's, I'll just try to explain the rule as easy as I can. So the, the rule of the follow pause is that rule one is only it only follow pause is always considered about the cat node and the star node not the R node. Okay so cat node we all, when we were trying to whenever we were trying to find the follow pause Never look at the R node. Always look at the cat node and the star node. Never look at the individual children's either. Just the nodes. That's it. Nodes are the, the symbols, not the alphabets, the symbols in between the alphabets. Right. So, so let's look at that. So first, uh, for let's find, let's complete the follow pause here. So the rule states that the last pause of the first child will follow the first pause of the, uh, the first pause of the second child. So we said that it always uh, is concerned with the star node or the cat node. So let's just write it down here. The last pause of the first child will follow the whole thing of the, uh, sorry, yeah, the last, sorry, again. So the, so the last pause, the red is the last pause over here. So the last pause of the first child will always follow, uh, uh, last pause of the last pause of the star star just the star with the last pause will always follow the first pause so one will follow two one will follow one two and two will also follow one two the one two whole the whole thing one will follow the whole of one two and two will follow the whole of one two so follow pause of one will be one two and follow pause of two will be one two right so that's done now let's look at the cat nodes so the in the cat nodes, let me just raise that. Right. In the cat nodes, the last pause of the first child will follow the uh, 
first pulse of the second child. So, the last pulse of the first child. The, uh, for this cat note, the last pulse of the, the last pulse of the first child is one two. And for this note, the, the for this child, the uh, the first pulse is three. So one will follow, one will follow three, and two will follow three. All right. So I've noted it down here. So first we found one follows one two, two follows one two. Again. For cat node, one follows three and two follows three. Again, similarly, for this, this is done. This is done. Now let's look at this. The last pause of the first child, so three, will follow the first pause of the second child. So three will follow four. Similarly, so this is also done. Look at this. So the last pause of the first child, which is four, will follow the first pause of the last child. So four will follow five. Again, the last pause of the first child, so this is also done. The last pause of the first child, so 5 will follow the first pause of the second child. So 5 follows 6. So let's check it. Yeah, 5 follows 6, 4 follows 5, and 3 follows 4. That's it. So we found the follow pause of these. Right, so now we are going to be moving on to constructing the DFA. Now, the follow pause is the main table that we're concerned with while we're finding the DFA. So, the rule is that you always start from the root. So, the root here is the topmost node, node in the syntax tree. The topmost node in the syntax tree is this, right? This over here is the topmost node of the syntax tree. So, the first pause of the root is 1, 2, 3. So, 1, 2, 3 is the first state of the DFA. So, first state of the DFA is 1, 2, 3. We know the input symbols are A and B. Now, so to find, the, to find where 1, 2, and 3 goes on input A and on input B, what you have to do is, we know that 1 marks the position of A and 2 marks the position of B. Let me just write it down here. So, 1 signifies A, 2 signifies B, 3 signifies A, 4 signifies uh, B, 5 signifies B and 6 signifies hash, but we don't care about that because, right. So, uh, hash does not matter to us. We just, here in this case, hash do, does not matter to us. Only the symbols that are in the original RE regular expression matters to us. Right, so the follow pause, since 1, 2, and 3 is here, so the, for the input symbol A, positions are 1 and 3, positions for A are 1 and 3. See, 1 and 3 has A. So, follow pause of 1 and follow pause of 3 will be united to form the union, will perform a union operation to the follow pause of 1 and 3 to get the next position. So, follow pause of 1 is 1, 2, 3 and follow pause of 3 is 4. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 will be the, new, the position here. So, B signifies 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, for the input symbol B, which the positions are follow pause of 2. Why B is concerned with 2? Two. 2 is concerned with B, right? So B, will, on input B, we'll have to find the follow pause of 2. So let's repeat it again. For follow pause of A and B, for follow pause of 1, 2, 3, uh, for 1 and 3 is the symbol of A. So on input A, the follow pause of 1 and follow pause of 3 will give us the, the, state, the state that we go to next. And for input B, the follow pause of 2 will give us a state that uh, this, this state goes on input B. So on input B, the follow pause of B is 1, 2, 3. So it goes to itself. So the new state that we've gotten here, I recall that when in a subset construction, what we do is whenever we get a new state, we put that as our root state and then we do the DFA thingy again. We just go to the whichever states we go to from that new state that we've gotten. When we don't get any more new states, it means that we've reached the end of our DFA. So we got a new state 1, 2, 3, 4. So in 1, 2, 3, 4, which of them are A? 1 and 3 are A, 2 and 4 are B. As you can see from here, it's better if you write this down so that you would know and you would not get confused because a tree can be confusing sometimes. Trust me, I've done mistakes just by looking at the tree. So 1 and 2. So 1 and 3. The follow pause of 1 and 3, union of 1 and 3 follow pause will give us whatever we get on input 1 and union of the follow pause of 2 and 4 will give us whatever we get for input B. So we get these states, B and C. As you can see, follow pause of 1 and 3, union, we get B, and follow pause of 2 and 4, union, we get C on input for input symbol B. Again, we get a new state C. So we do the same thing again. Now, 
uh, yeah so we know that for 5 it's a b so 1 and uh, 1 when it's when we have 1 2 3 what did we get 5 when we have 1 2 3 and 5 so 1 and 3 you uh, follow pause of 1 and 3 union it we get 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 and 2 and 5 so follow pause of 2 and 5 is 1 2 3 and 5 is 6 so 1 2 3 6 1 2 3 6 so we get a new state here 1 2 3 6 so 1 2 3 6 now 1 and 3 are for input a so follow pause of union of follow pause of 1 and 3 we get 1 2 we, we get 1 2 3 4 3 4 and the union of follow pause of 2 and 6 well, 6 is for hash symbol, so we don't need to consider that at all. And even in the follow pose, you can see it's an empty set, so it's not considered anyway. So we just get the follow pose of 2. So follow pose of 2 is 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3. So this is the final DFA that we get. Let's just check the answers. Right, yes, we did get the same stuff. You can pause the video and go back to see if, you, if I made any mistake, but I, I doubt I did. So that is the final states, this is the, sub, the table that we get, the transition table that we get. And then the last step is just to draw a normal DFA out of the transition state. Now, which would be the accepting state? This is the start state. All right, so let me just mark the start state. Which one would you consider as accepting state? Whichever has, see now, now the, uh, ho, the whole use of hashtag thingy symbol comes in why we used augmented regular expression so hash signifies this accepting state so wherever you would find the number six so six is over here that would be the accepting state so this is d is the accepting state so one two three six is the accepting state so in your dfa would mark this as the accepting state right so and this is the start state so that was it that's how you convert a regular uh, D, a regular expression to a DFA. Uh, it's really easy, but it's yeah, it's a bit bit of a lengthy process. But if you practice it, you'll get the hang of it. I hope this video was helpful. Give a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to support this series. And good luck.